Hi guys. Um, I have no idea where this uh, video is going to go or what entirely it's going to be about, but I was just sitting here journaling my thoughts and thought that I should come on. No makeup again, of course, but um, who cares? But about, I guess it's kind of about what I've been going through the past week or so. And the disease of alcoholism or addiction or whatever and how it affects the lives of people around them. I, um, my dad was an alcoholic growing up and my husband who I'm separated from is a recovering addict. And it seems that I repeat the same things over and over again. So what I learned this week during my therapy session, my EMDR session, um, it brought up some stuff like basically like, why do I not feel worthy? Why do I not feel good enough? All that stuff. Why am I so sensitive when people react at me, even though it's not at me. <laughs> I mean, it's at me, but not because of me. And so as we're doing it, of course, all this stuff, this memory comes up and it was a memory that I know and I've thought of it before, but it wasn't until that meeting with this situation that it just hit me really, really, really hardcore. Basically rocked my world and I realized, and I'm reeling from it since. So I've gone back to like the pains in my stomach, just excruciating and just dealing with it. But then I realized like I'm getting it out, I'm getting it up, I'm bringing it to the surface. So I'm taking out the energy that was trapped in my body and I'm bringing it to the surface. And so it's not gonna be pretty, it's not gonna be fun, it's not gonna be like this rainbows and butterflies and beautiful birds at first. So I'm still reeling through it. I'm actually doing better this morning so far. Um, knock on wood but uh so it's just getting through those those feelings of that and knowing that just like when you fall down and you scrape up your knee let's say you scraped up your knee and you cut it and like you can't expect your body to heal instantaneously like it takes some time it takes <laughs> you and you have to take care of it like you have to take care of it. You have to care for it and have love for it and and do the things that you need to do for it. So like with that, you would clean it off. You would put some ointment on it. You would put a bandage over it. You would keep it clean. You would, um, if your knee hurt, you would rest your knee. You'd put some ice on it or heat on it or whatever it is that your body needed. You would do what you needed to do to take care of the pain and the injury that happened. Well, that's the same thing for your mental and, you know, bodily body. Like you have to do the same thing. So it's just not in physical form. So it's not right there in your face, except for when you have people like me who manifest it into bodily symptoms. And, and then I have to do things to take care of me. Like even though I was in pain, I still had to eat. I still had to go on with life and I still, but I still took the time to reach out for support and, and support with not only with support with other people, but support with myself, support with my spirit team and just asking for help. Like I'm not alone in this. I can get support. And luckily I've had, you know, beautiful people help me and do everything they can to help me feel better quicker. Cause you know, you want to heal it faster. So just like when you get a boo-boo on your knee and you're taking care of it, you want to send some energy to it to help it heal faster. That's exactly what I was doing this week is 
let's make the boo-boo better faster and, and, and still work through it. Like not just shove it back down and, and not deal with it. Cause that's not what we want to do is I want to get it up, get it out, recognize it, love it for what it is and let it go. And know that the things that happened in my past, like for example, with my dad being the alcoholic, that was the disease of it. Like, he was who he was because of the disease of what he was doing. Like it had nothing to do with me, even though it came at me. So, and that's the same thing with the situation with my, my husband and when he cheated on me and um, ultimately has a child with another woman who turns out to be the same age as my son. And I didn't find that out until what? I can't even keep track now. Two years ago? Three years ago? Three years ago? I don't know. One of those two. Um, I always felt like, well, when that happened, it was like, oh, of course, because I, I, I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not, it's my fault. Um, it seems so, so, so silly to say something like that, but that's what happens to people is they they think that it's because of them and and really it's just the disease it had nothing to do with me and I'm realizing that now as of today I'm sitting here and I'm journaling journaling is really good to do um and bringing that stuff up this week it was like one thing after the other after the other I was like I recognize like why I ha why I react the way like when somebody gets upset and they take it out on me, it feels like, you know, when they're just projecting that anger, but it's really not at you, it's at the situation, but it feels like it's at you. Like I'm super sensitive to that, like super sensitive. That always have been. I'm a very much empathic person. And so, but that had to do with growing up and the way things came at me. And so I took it as all my fault. And so I'm able to see and connect uh, the pieces in order to change my behavior. So I personally have to see it in order to change my behavior because I don't want to repeat the same patterns over and over again because I'm so, so done with it. And so when I had always blamed Zach for all my stomach problems and my colon surgery and hernia repair surgery and and I was like, it had to do with you and all the stuff you did to me and it's all your fault. And while the things that happened were his fault for what he did, but I always had a choice in it. I didn't have to stay. I didn't have to put up with that crap. Like I chose to stay in it. And why did I choose to stay in it? Because I felt trapped and I felt like I wasn't worth it. I'm not deserving. I'm not. And so all of those past beliefs that I got from growing up, um, kept me in these situations. So what I want to say now is it's empowering to put all the pieces together like a puzzle and realize that I have always been deserving of the very best of things, the very good things in life all the love, all the joy, like I deserve all of that. And had I felt the same way back then, would I have stayed in those situations? Hell no. <laughs> I mean, no. Why? Why would I put myself through that if I felt like I did and knew that I deserve the best and I'm worth it and that I don't have to put up with that. So that's where I'm at today. So it's, it's, it's about digging in and, and doing the work and putting together the pieces and the puzzle is different for everybody. All the pieces of the puzzle are different for everybody. Like what I'm doing may not work for somebody else, but just knowing that there's similarities and that you can find the way and the way that works for you, then 
that's great. And, and now it's all about love. Like, that's why I keep talking about love. Like, it's all about love. Like, loving myself enough to say enough is enough. These are my boundaries. And so I know now that I will never let somebody ever drag me down again. I will never settle. I will never put up with stuff that I don't need to put up with. I'm in control of me and what I'm doing and what I need to do for me. And somebody else's crap is their own crap. <laughs> and so, um, so that's why that mirror work, the last one I said about mirror work and looking in the mirror into your eyes and saying that I deserve the best things in life. I'm deserving. I'm worthy. I am lovable. Um, and being able to accept the love. We're really good at giving love and stuff out, but accepting it ourselves and accepting it from ourselves. And I noticed that I still have to work on that. And so last night, like I was doing Qigong with um, my son and my husband were doing a living room and I've been having stomach pains like a lot. And so I, after we got done, I was just, it was cramping and it was just nice to have the both of them there supporting me they knew I was having trouble and they just took the moment to just like rub my back and just be there with me you know and so it's good to find those people that can support you in those times that you you need that extra help to lift you up and this isn't to make anybody feel bad about the things they have done because, you know, I know now that addiction and alcoholism, it's a disease and they are not themselves. They're lost in their disease. And if they weren't lost in their disease, then they'd be completely different people. And we all have our character defects as they call them. Um, And so I was just looking through my notes here just to see. Um, I don't always have to assume that something bad is going to happen when something good starts happening. So I've been feeling really good lately. I actually was feeling really, really great up until my EMDR session. And then it just kind of like whoo, slammed me back down. But sometimes you have to fall back down in order to go up higher the next time. And so that's what it was about was I pulled some cards um, yesterday and they had to do with, um, I got Krishna, which is, um, it had to do with devotion and <laughs> it was funny because it even said it felt like you were going through in a mental, emotional battlefield. And it did like, it totally did. It was like a war in my mind and it was like, almost like afraid to let that go. But at the same time, like you know you need to let it go and you're ready to let it go, but you're still holding on for some reason because it's what's comfortable, it's what you know. Um, and so it was like a battle in my head and I thought I was going to lose my shit completely and end up in the hospital somewhere. Um, but with that being said, like I knew what I needed to do. I knew I needed to go for a walk in the woods and I had to get connected and I had to work through it the best that I could. And so for me, that's working. Um, in the woods and that's where I get my divine communication with spirit and through these cards and then I you know I had this card with ah, it's not backwards Master Jesus about forgiveness and I definitely 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 have to work on forgiveness and forgiveness of myself 
forgiveness of the others that may have done some things that weren't right. I mean, it doesn't mean I have, I, I accept, because accept means it is what it is, but it doesn't mean I have to agree with it and forgiveness of that. And that's where the journey or the path that I'm on right now and all the things that I'm doing to help me with that. So for me, it is doing my meditations, pulling my cards, um, doing my sound healing. And as much as I want to give out and help other people heal right now, at the same time, it's like, I was, I feel like I'm being told like, it's about me right now. And so what do I need to do for me? And then the rest will follow. And so just getting to the bottom of why I don't love myself enough, why I'm, I don't feel good enough, and why I don't feel deserving of all the good things in life, that is huge because that's like a huge block that has kept me held back from lots of things and making different decisions and different choices. And it's a transformation. So like I'm a different person than I was just two years ago, even a year ago. And it's crazy that I'm to this point where like somebody's gonna, you know, have to get to know the new me. Like I, I am changing so many behaviors that were created be from the situation. So being in a relationship with an addict, um, <laughs> you, uh, if you don't have the programs of like Al-Anon or nor -Anon to help you work through these things, then you become this uh, crazy person, almost crazy like they are, um, because you let it consume you. And it's no longer about you anymore. You don't even know who you are anymore because you're so focused on the addict. And really it's just taught me to come back to me and transform me and there was a song I was just listening to right now. It was Selena Gomez and it said, uh, lose you to love me. So I had to lose you to love me. So I had to lose him to love me. And not only that, but losing him and, and, and ending that relationship ultimately helped him get to where he's at today. So, and that was a really hard decision to make, but I had to, to, to do that with my higher power in a walk in the woods. And I cried and cried and cried because I knew what I had to do. I just didn't want to do it. Like it was painful. It's super painful. It's like the butterfly transforming. I'm sure that's not pleasant. It's not, doesn't feel good. Um, and like the diamond that turns into the diamond under severe, severe pressure, like that doesn't feel good either. If that had feelings, then that would suck. Uh, but the beautiful thing that happens afterwards is what's so crucial and why you shouldn't give up and why you need to keep going. And I mean that towards me. So like why I shouldn't give up, why I need to keep going, even though this week has sucked as far as like pains and emotions and feelings of I'm losing my shit. Like it's all totally going to be worth it. And in the end, I'm going to be this much stronger, more powerful, more resilient person, knowing that I have a voice. Before I started going to Alan on on like I didn't talk to many people, hardly anybody about what was really going on with me in my life and and I'm seeing like it's okay I can talk about this like this is not just me I'm not alone there's other people out there just like it who have grown up in same situations and been in a relationship with same situations and so knowing that I'm not alone and knowing the steps and the tools to get me to be transformed and like the other day, um, my husband got me a medallion coin. Let me grab it. So, 
it is the Phoenix. Oh crap, you can't see it in there because the plastic. But it's a Phoenix. Oh, there we go. And on the back it has the Serenity Prayer. And it basically just says, out of the ashes of addiction, renewal, and growth. So, <laughs> it's so fitting because of the Phoenix. Like, I feel like the Phoenix. Like, I literally was broken down to ashes only to arise. And then, taking all the tools that I learned along the way... And I'm, I'm going to start, you know, putting stuff on this channel as far as like things that helped me along the way, including tapping and I mean, you name it, I do it, especially writing and speaking, speaking about it too, like voicing it, getting it out, takes away the power or gives you back your power. And a lot of situations I have to take back my power and my meditations. There's so many things that you can do to help yourself and know that you're not alone and reach out for help. And all you can do is ask your higher power, you know, to help you because they can't step in and help you unless you ask for help. And so every morning I wake up and either I've opened my eyes or not opened my eyes yet and I'm asking for help and I'm asking for guidance and I'm asking to be of service and I'm asking all those things and, and, and being grateful for what I have and what I've learned and how far I've come. Cause I think I, I forget that, like how much work you do, but how much you've actually succeeded and how far you've come. And even though like I had a rough week, this too shall pass. It's not going to last forever. And I'm going to be feeling so much better and so much more empowered and hopefully those blockages that have been stopping me from doing the things that I want to do will be removed so I can step into the person that I'm supposed to be and I'm just excited for the journey for learning who I am and what I'm becoming and listening to myself and not being lost in somebody else's stuff because somebody else's stuff has nothing to do with me, regardless as to whatever relationship, you know, friendship, work relationship, I mean, whatever. And coming back to the fact that I love myself, I'm deserving of all the good things in life, and this is why I'm not going to give up. This is why I'm gonna keep going. This is why I'm gonna keep digging. This is why I'm gonna keep pushing myself and why I'm going to continue to get messages to help me connect the dots so I can make the necessary changes. Because my behaviors are so different now and I used to be so angry and and that was part of my disease is I was wrapped up in their disease and <laughs> I would eat my feelings and my emotions and I'm a super emotional person and I gained so much weight as you all know I was up to like 305 pounds and now I'm at like 160 between 160 and 165 but I've made I've maintained now I can't eat my feelings I can't eat my emotions I have to face them I have to deal with them and they're not bad. That's what I realized before is that I was considering them bad. They're not bad. They're not bad to have feelings. It's just bad to stuff those feelings down. It's bad to stuff those feelings down enough to where you're reacting to other people and taking out on other people. But the feelings that I'm having are not bad. So I need to recognize them, love them, accept them, and release them when they occur. And I'm able to start seeing that now. And I'm able to make amends pretty quickly if I do screw up. Because, you know, we're not perfect and I do screw up. Um, so, with that said, that's just a little bit of my backstory. And I just wanted to let you guys know that you are not alone. You do not have to put up with anything that you don't want to put up with. Whatever situation that you're in, whatever situation it is, just know there's always a choice. And 
sometimes we have to look at ourselves and see where am I holding myself back? And for me, it was, I didn't feel deserving. I didn't feel worthy. I didn't feel good enough. And I never felt pretty enough. And, and that all came back to like, I didn't love myself. I didn't respect myself. I didn't trust myself and know that I'm okay, regardless as to what's happening, going on around me. And I just, and I need tools. I need tools to help me get through. I need tools to help me learn and to grow. And so every day I do something myself and then take time to have fun, you know, take time to have fun and, and go enjoy life. And, and when you're feeling really down, like this morning on my Facebook feed, um, when, when my youngest was a baby and there was a video of her when she does that silly laugh. Oh my gosh. Like, so that just took me from like a low vibration to like a high vibration. And I just was just so enwrapped in just the love and joy that I have for her. And, and so that was a good feeling today. So anyway, I'm just feeling really good today. And when you're not feeling good, sometimes you just got to watch a video like that just to kind of take you out of the funk and get you out of the moment and, and, and know that everything is happening for a reason. Everything is happening for a reason. And everybody does the things they're doing because they're just trying the best that they can to. And that's all that we can ask. And it's one day, one step at a time, sometimes one minute at a time. And loving yourself and compassion for yourself. And getting to know the true, real you. And you are lovable and you are a child of light and love and have always been deserving of all the good things. And we can connect with that just through the heart center. So everything you need to know, everything is here within you. It totally is. And you just have to believe it and you have to feel it. And when I saw this card, I saw like the woods. It almost looked like trees in the background to me. And so I thought that is when I connect with you is when I'm out in the woods and I'm connected with nature. That is when I get out of my head space and I drop down into my heart space, which is the space that I need to be in to get all those inspiring messages and hear my higher power speaking to me through my heart space. So find what works for you. Find where you need to go or do to get into this heart space. And that could be through, through doing something creative. Um, it could be through journaling. It could be through, um, I mean, there's all different tapping. It could be through meditation, it could be through yoga. I prefer Qigong. Um, there's different ways to get you there when you can't leave your circumstances. And so do what you gotta do to get there. But just remember, it's always there within you. Your higher power is in here within you. And we are all connected. We are all one. We're all a mirror of each other. That's why I felt like this was like looking at a mirror. I am you, you am, you are me. So, and we're connected through here. So I hope that helps or at least explains a little bit of what is going on. And, and there are tools out there to help you get through. You just have to find out which ones you like, which ones work for you. And they all change for me. So like I'll want to tap one day or I want to do meditation another day. Or I want to do Qigong another day. But my quick and easy one is get your butt out there. Because really I want to curl up in a ball this week and come lay down in my bed. Because I was literally physically sick and mentally sick. And I wanted to curl up in a ball in the fetal position. And my therapist was like, no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to practice 
expanding your diaphragm. I don't want you to go back to what you normally do. And I want you to, to focus on stretching it out. So I knew I wanted to go to sleep. So instead I was like, I got my happy butt up, even though I didn't want to, and I won't probably go to throw up. And I took my butt for a walk and I came home and took a shower and I went to bed. I did go to bed early. I never go to bed early and I went to bed early, but I needed to because I was not feeling well at all. So, um, so yeah, so just know that whatever tool works for you, you will figure it out, but you got to keep looking, keep searching, keep asking and every day be grateful and thankful. And I even have a journal that's just for gratitude, but I've just kind of been writing all over the place. I have several journals. <laughs> so, um, so with that, I'm sending you all love and light and hopefully my next video will be about tapping and how to get started with that. Love y'all.